What is the right DJI drone for you? There's a whole bunch of them. We're gonna talk through them from the cheapest all the way up to the most expensive. Don't go anywhere. Hey everybody, thank you for stopping by. If you don't know me, I am one of the owners of a company called Aerial Influence. We focus on selling drones to like police and fire departments, mostly enterprise drones, things for search and rescue, inspection work, that kind of thing. But we can sell all of the drones that we're gonna talk about here today. So if you're interested, make sure to reach out to us. You see the phone number and the email address. It's also down in the description below. But let's get started talking about all these great DJI drones. I'm gonna start out by talking about one of the most fun drones on the market today. That is the DJI Avada. It is a really remarkable little drone. It can be used to rip around outside, going between trees, going between obstacles. It is a fast little drone. With this drone, you have to wear FPV goggles. So that takes a little bit of getting used to for some people, but once you're in it, you are absolutely gonna love it. The other great thing about it is it has something called the motion controller. Now this is a remote that is unlike your typical remote control with your left and right thumbsticks. You don't have that. This is a one-handed remote. If you wanna go up, you point the remote up. If you wanna go down, you point it down. You wanna turn, you tilt your wrist. It is a really fun drone to use and at under $1,600, it is in a relatively comfortable price point for people that are looking to get into drones. Now I should mention that all the drones we're talking about today are remote ID compliant, so you're not gonna have to add on a module, nothing like that. The package I'm talking about for the Avada includes the Integra goggles, so you do not need to hook the goggles up to a phone or anything like that uh, to get your remote ID compliance. Now, why do I love this drone? Well, one, the FPV goggles really make you feel like you're right in it. Like you can squeeze through gaps, so go through things like windows, going through doors, it makes it a lot easier to fly in close quarters. The other thing I love are the prop guards. If you hit a wall, it's not gonna just like flip over. It's gonna actually bounce. It'll bounce off the wall. Now, if you hit it hard enough and it does fall, another great feature is it actually has turtle mode. So it'll take the drone upside down, run two of its props, flip it right back up, and you can take off again. So really, really a cool little drone. And like I said, for less than $1,600, you're getting the goggles, you're getting the motion controller, uh, you're getting the drone itself, you're gonna end up with three batteries and a multi-charger for that price. Now, I should also mention that the Avada has a relatively low flight time at 18 minutes, whereas the rest of the drones we're talking about today are gonna be anywhere between 35 and 45 minutes of stated flight time. This one is at 18 minutes, so you're not gonna get as much time in the air with the Avada, but still a great little drone, and I don't think anybody is gonna be unhappy with this purchase. Sticking in the same size range and in the same price range is the DJI Mini 4 Pro. Now, this is a more standard flying drone than the Avada, but still a drone that you're able to get into tight spaces that you can fly through rooms. Now, like I said, the Mini 4 Pro is similar in size to the Avada. It can still fit through tight spaces, but if you're gonna be flying it indoors, we tell you to put prop guards on it. Those prop guards make it really, really big. So make it twice the size of the Avada at least. But the Mini 4 Pro is a great starter drone at less than $1,200. That's with the Fly More kit. So you're getting three batteries. You're getting a smart controller with the screen built in. It really is a great deal. It's got a great 4K camera on it. It'll shoot true vertical video. So the actual gimbal will, will turn on its side. So it's shooting real high resolution 4K vertical video. It'll do things like active track, it has master shots, it's got obstacle avoidance, that 4K camera that I talked about also shoots 48 megapixel stills. And for less than $1,200, the package includes that smart controller with the screen built in as well. So that's a really nice thing where you don't have to hook your phone up to it, you don't have to fumble around with any cables or anything. You're literally just taking the remote out, hitting start and going from there. So we recommend this drone for lots of people, but people starting out specifically, we also recommend it for people that are buying some of the bigger, more expensive drones, uh, you know, that are in the tens of thousands of dollars and they just want something to practice on. Because all of these drones fly the same in terms of their stick movements. So it makes the DJI Mini 4 Pro a great pick if you're just starting out or if you're just gonna be doing some drone training. Now I should also mention that the Mini 3 Pro is out there. If you don't mind not having the absolute latest technology, you're gonna get that cheaper. And the Mini 2 SE is out there too, I believe, and you're really gonna get a good deal on that. Taking the next step up is the DJI Air 3. 
Now this one's coming in at under $1,600 as well. That's with the smart controller. That's with three batteries. Uh, you get the whole package there for under $1,600. And so far, all of our drones have been less than $1,600. Now this drone's gonna be a little faster than the Mini 4. It is gonna be able to take higher winds than the Mini 4. But the big thing is that it has two cameras to it. So it has got a wide angle camera and it has a telephoto zoom camera. And that's great because if you know when you're using digital zoom only, when you're just zooming in with that sensor, everything is gonna get more pixelated. So the further you zoom, the worse the image is gonna look. But because this drone has two cameras on it, the zoom is gonna be better because you're gonna get more of the pure optical image and it not being completely zoomed in on that one lens. You're also getting obstacle avoidance on this drone. You're also getting that flight time of around 45 minutes. Now I would say that the Mini 4 Pro, which we just talked about is more for like social media. So if you're just using it for social media, I think the Mini 4 Pro is gonna be absolutely fine for you. Uh, the Air 3 kicks it up a little bit and you could probably use it for a little more professional work. Maybe not, you know, you're not making movies here, but it's something you're using for work and you need nice imagery. But it's a great deal if you're looking to do something a little bit more than what the Mini 4 Pro offers. Next up, we wanna talk about the Mavic 3 series. Now I'm gonna talk about their Enterprise series of Mavics in a little bit, but now we're just talking about the consumer level drone. Now the big story on this drone is it has three cameras. So it has got a micro four thirds camera on it. That is an incredible camera for imagery, especially on a drone the size of a Mavic. So a micro four thirds sensor, it is gonna give you great depth of field. It is gonna give you great imagery. Uh, so that's a huge plus for this drone. It also has two telephoto lenses on it as well. So again, you're gonna get lots of zoom range and it is gonna be high quality zoom. You're also gonna get better wind resistance with this than you would with the Mavic Air 3 around the similar flight time in the 40 to 45 minute range. The main Mavic 3 Pro Fly More combo is around $3,900. So the price has significantly gone up, but so has your image quality. Now there are a couple different variations on this drone. You're gonna get a cheaper version. It's the Mavic 3 Classic. That's only gonna have one lens on it. It's gonna have that micro four thirds lens on it. So really great image quality still, but you lose those two telephoto zoom. Then you've got the Mavic 3 Pro Cinema Bundle. Uh, this is really the same drone, but you've got a built-in SSD. You can record in really high quality video and it's gonna add a lot to the price. So if you are serious about filmmaking, this could be a great drone for you, the cinema version. But speaking of pro, we gotta talk about the Mavic's big brother, which is the Inspire 3. Now this drone, I believe, falls on the consumer side, even though it is used mostly for work. So you would think it would be on the enterprise side. Uh, but this drone is absolutely amazing. It looks like it's something out of some futuristic movie, uh, but it is a real tool in the filmmaking world. It's awesome because it has those legs that come up, so you've got 360 degrees that that gimbal can move. And you've also got the plus of the fact that it has an FPV camera on the front of it. And what does that mean? Well, a couple things. One, if your gimbal were to go out for some reason, you still got that FPV camera on the drone that is gonna get you back home. The other great reason to have it is because you can use two remotes with this drone. It features the awesome DJI RC Plus remote. It is big, it is beefy, but it is an incredible remote control where you can actually use two of them to fly this drone. One person can fly the drone using the FPV camera while the other person controls the camera. So they don't have to worry about the flying. They are literally just controlling that gimbal. It's got an 8K sensor on it. So again, you're talking about amazing imagery but all of this comes with the price tag. You're looking at around $16,500 for the drone without a camera on it. But once you add all the extras, you're looking at $20,000 plus. So, so far that's the biggest, most expensive drone we talked about, but now we wanna to switch to the enterprise drones. So these are drones that are used for work. So like search and rescue for police and fire departments, inspection work, all sorts of different things. Now we talked about the Mavic series earlier, but now we wanna talk about the DJI Mavic 3 Enterprise series. There are three different versions of this drone. One is the Mavic 3 Enterprise, one is the Mavic 3 Thermal, and the other is the Mavic 3 Multispectral. We'll start with the Mavic 3 Enterprise. This drone has that big micro four thirds sensor that we talked about earlier. And this drone is really built for mapping. It's got a mechanical shutter on it, which is important for mapping because you're not gonna get a bunch of blurry shots as you're flying along. And it really is the drone that kind of replaced the Phantom 4 RTK as the go-to mapping drone. Good thing about all of these Enterprise drones is they have attachments you can put on top. So you see here on a regular Mavic, there is no little port up here. Well, on this one, there is a little port where you can put things like speakers, 
spotlights, and you can also put an RTK module on it. RTK stands for real-time kinematics, but basically it means it's GPS on steroids. So if you're using the DJI Enterprise drone for mapping, you are gonna get ultra precise maps when you're using that RTK top hat. Now granted, you will need to have an RTK base station or you'll need to sign into a public RTK network. They're called N-Trip networks, but you'll need to sign into one of those uh, to actually utilize the RTK. The RTK base station from DJI, that's an additional $4,000. So keep that in mind as we talk about these drones, they are all capable of RTK and they're all capable of putting things like speakers and spotlights on top of them as well. So you've got that great color sensor on the Mavic 3 Enterprise, but let's talk about the Mavic 3 Thermal. The star of this drone obviously is that thermal sensor. You're gonna get 640 by 512 high resolution imaging from this drone. So even at 400 feet, you're gonna be able to see a heat signature in the middle of the night. Here's an example, I was out about a week ago helping somebody find a lost dog. We never found the dog, unfortunately. But what I did find was a whole bunch of deer. So you can see here, I'm flying, we're getting close to sunset, and it is actually kinda of hard to see the deer with my color camera. But when I have it in thermal, there is no doubt that there are several hot images over there and I just have to fly over and figure out what it is. In this case, it was a whole bunch of deer. Now the Mavic 3 Enterprise and the Mavic 3 Thermal both have 56 time color zoom on it as well. So you're gonna be able to zoom quite a bit. You're not gonna have to fly too close to your subject. You'll be able to zoom right in there. The last drone in the Mavic 3 Enterprise series is the Mavic 3 Multispectral. Now this is a drone that is used for farming. It's used to be able to tell the health of crops. So by reading the data that the drone spits out, a crop analyst can actually tell the health of the field. They can say, hey, this part of the field needs more water. This part of the field needs more fertilizer. So it is a great tool for those in the agricultural world. It also has that micro four thirds sensor on it. So another great drone for mapping. Now pricing on these three drones with four batteries, with smart controllers, with the hard case, all that kind of good stuff. You're looking at around $4,300 for the Mavic 3 Enterprise. You're looking at around $5,300 for the Multispectral. And you're looking at about $6,200 for the Mavic 3 Thermal. So in this video, we have mentioned six different versions of the Mavic 3. This is definitely the flagship drone for DJI. Lots of different features on each one of them. So just wanted to sort of briefly break each one down here so you knew what each one of them did. All right, next up, let's talk about the DJI M30T. I've got it right here. This bad boy is something special. It is my favorite drone on the market today. And there are several reasons why it is a big upgrade to the Mavic 3 Thermal. Not only does it have the same high resolution 640 by 512 thermal sensor on it, but it has a 200 times zoom range on it. It has a laser range finder. It is IP55 rated, so you're gonna be able to fly this thing in rain, wind, or snow. And it's got the RTK antenna already built into it, so it's not an additional buy. Now you still are gonna have to have that RTK base station or you're gonna have to be able to log into that network I talked about, uh, but it does have the RTK already built into it, so you're not gonna have to add an additional top mount for that one. But speaking about adding additional things to the drone, it does also have a port on top where you can add things as well, like speakers, like spotlights, all sorts of different stuff. Uh, but this really is a great drone. There's also the M30 version of this drone, which does not have thermal on it. So it's just gonna have your color camera, your laser range finder, and your zoom camera. But to me, this is hands down the best drone on the market today. It is relatively small and compact. You can get this thing up in the air in less than a minute, and it is incredibly reliable. Again, it uses that big RC Plus remote. It also does dual controllers, so you can have two people flying, one with the camera and one flying the drone. And it also does things like tracking. So you can lock onto a subject, and the drone will use that crazy zoom range that it has to continually follow an object. Now, whether that is a person or whether that is a car. The drone itself doesn't actually like fly after that object, it just uses the zoom range. But another really cool feature of this drone and one of the reasons I think it is the best drone on the market, you're gonna get it for around $12,000. Now, that's a lot cheaper than the Inspire 3, but this brings a whole different level of functionality to it because it's not built for filmmaking. So yes, the cameras are great, but you're not gonna have that great cinematic video from these drones. All right, last but not least is the DJI M350. This is the big brother to the M30 series, probably twice as big as the M30 and the M30T, and has a lot of the same functionality. 
One of the gimbals that you can buy for this is the H20T. It's basically identical to the camera on the DJI M30T that we just talked about. But what makes this drone special is it's more adaptable. You can put a camera on top of it if you want. You can put two cameras on the bottom. So say you wanted a thermal in one spot, a zoom in another spot, and a LiDAR in another spot. You could have all three of those cameras going at the same time. And it's nice because if DJI comes out with another gimbal in the near future, you can always upgrade. The downside of something like the M350 is it's big, it's bulky, it's gonna take you a few minutes to set it up, you gotta put the legs in, you gotta put the arms, blah, blah, blah. It's gonna take you a little bit longer. But it's great because it also has RTK built into it, so you're not gonna have any issues there. And it is also IP55 rated. So a lot of similarities to the M30 series, but it's got that adaptability where you can change gimbals if you really need to. So I know that was a brief overview, but we get people all the time asking like what drones they should start with. Do they wanna spend thousands of dollars on a drone or do they wanna keep it relatively cheap? Well, this was our attempt to sort of walk you through what all is out there. If you've got questions about any of these drones, make sure you reach out to us. We'd love to talk to you. We've flown all these drones, we sell all these drones, and we'd love to tell you more about them. If you like this video, make sure you hit like and subscribe. We work really hard to make these videos, so make sure you support us in that way. We appreciate you stopping by, and we'll see you next time.